All right, I want you to stand and I want you to open your heart and I want you to just be receptive to the word of God. Again, we have a preacher in the building. He's a dear friend of ours and uh, we love him. We love his family and uh, he is the pastor of New Dimension Church of God in Brooklyn, New York. Can you receive him with a very warm <laughs> Valle de Texas welcome our good friend Daniel Pinedo. Come on, give that to the Lord if you love him. Come on, if he's been good to you, he deserves your best praise. Come on, come on, if he's been good to you, don't play with that praise. You better give it to him like you des he deserves it. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you look good today. Look at that same neighbor. And tell her, but not better than me. Amen. Because I am great. <laughs> look at that same neighbor and say, you better be thankful you're next to me. I make you look better today. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. It is an honor and a privilege to be amongst you all this morning. Um, I want to bless the Lord and thank God for the father of the house, the priest of the house, and the first lady of this house. Can we bless the Lord for the pastors of this house and this, this place, Vital? I love Vital Church. Uh, you know, Pastor Charlie has become a good friend, and um, I'm so excited uh, with the things that God is doing amongst this church and amongst the, the future of this church. We, uh, we are in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, we just, in February 11th, went into our new location and um, we also had to do construction and um, move from our current location to our new location with more space and more opportunity. And um, God has been blessing us. So I know uh, that if he's blessing us in New York, um, the valley the valley's not ready for when you guys open your new location because God's going to bless you big. Amen. So I bless you guys for this time. Uh, receive greetings from our church, New Dimension Church in Brooklyn, New York. Um, from my wife, uh, Jamie Pinedo, which at this moment, which is 1108, she's currently preaching. And, um, and our church and our children, Jaden, uh, Zachariah, and Kaylee Marie, which are kind of running the house. Um, especially that girl. <laughs> oh, God. Call us. Um, she's, she's six now. You know, when I came last year, she was five. And a year it makes a big difference. God, God. Okay, so... We're going to leave it at that. So it makes a big difference. I don't know what's wrong with her. But I'm still praying um, for God to help me to understand her ways. Uh, but it's, so, it's such an honor and a privilege when Pastor, uh, well, Pastor Osiel, uh, bless you, love you, sir. And um, I, I, he reached out to me. Uh, he said, what do you think if this is possible? Uh, and, you know, I looked at the, the, the calendar and I said, it's, it's like Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's like Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. And I was like, it's the, like the conference is like in the day, you know. Um, and then I said, let me see what I can do and make it work. And then Pastor Charlie uh, called me and we, we spoke a little bit. And, and I, told my, I talked to my wife. And she's like, déjame saber. She was like, I was, I was like, what? So just to let me know, si me tengo que preparar, you know, I was like, okay, calm down, I gotta get ready, <laughs> sorry, I said that in Spanish, because she said it in Spanish, she normally don't talk to me in Spanish, but that moment, dímelo, I'm like, calm down, you anointed, <laughs> you in this Holy Ghost, like, when do you, you don't talk to me in Spanish, how do you do that, she was in the Holy Ghost, she was on fire, I got a word, I said, all right, whatever, I'll go, <laughs> since you want to preach, all right, but, um, I'm so thankful that God made it happen, you know, um, and I told Pastor, we're friends, so, you know, uh, uh, he could have called me the day before and I would have been fine just because uh, that's what friends do for each other, amen? Um, and then I get to come to Vital, you know, this is the hot spot, you know, I'm just saying. Don't y'all think this is the hot spot? I mean, I'm more excited than you are, you know, and I'm in Brooklyn, you know. Um, but I have a word for you guys today, and I want to make sure that I do right compared to what I did last year, because the first service, I talked too much, right? And then there was a whole bunch, and I'm like, so I learned, and my wife told me, aprendiste? And I was like, yes, I did learn, baby. I'm going to make sure I drop everything I got on time, you know? I don't want Pastor Charlie to be like, Espíritu Santo tiene que calmarse, okay? Calmate. Um, and, but, but he told me in the office, you know, we're Pentecostal. You know, you don't tell that to a Puerto Rican, you know? Um, 
because we don't know about time frame, you know. But I, want, I do have a word for you, and um, I want to make sure I drop what I have for you because I, I believe the Lord's going to minister to you. So I'm going to ask you to stand real quick for the reading of the text. And we're going to be in the book of Habakkuk, chapter number three. The book of Habakkuk, chapter number three. That is a book in the Bible. Um, it's, it's chapter number three. We're going to consider verse 17 and 18 and even read verse number 19. I'm not sure if I sent that as part of uh, the text, but I'm going to read verse 19. When you have it, say amen. If not, just follow us on the screens because I know they're going to have it there for us. Uh, the word of God is blessed and it reads as follows. Although the fig tree may not blossom, uh, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Uh, though the flock may cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet, say with me, yet, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse number 19, the Lord God is my what? Strength. Say it, the Lord God is my what? Strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels. Can I read verse 17 again? Though the fig tree may not what? Blossom, nor fruit be on the what? Vines. Though the labor of the olives may what? Fail, and the fields yield no what? Food. Though the flock may cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. What? Yet. Say yet I will rejoice in who in who I will joy in the God of my what and look at your neighbor and says tell him I have to do it then y'all look at somebody you like and just tell him I have to do it something has to change come on tell him something has to change tell that neighbor it doesn't matter what I'm going through or what it looks like it still requires for me to give him my best praise. Something's about to shift when I open up my mouth and give him my best praise. Take a seat. Take a seat. The word is blessed. My God, my God, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if when we read the text, um, if you can do me a favor and just put verse 17 up there and just leave it up there for a moment. If you have ever been in a place like the text that was read today that the, that the, that brother, the, the Habakkuk ended up, I'm going to call this a moment of sorrow, a moment of chaos, a moment of uh, lack, a moment of weakness, a moment of frustration. I think that there comes moments in our lives where we face situations like the prophet Habakkuk. And I wonder if you've ever been there, you know, a moment of uncertainty. A moment of lack, a moment of confusion, a moment of doubt, a moment of desperation. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are not where you should be with God. It just means that you're going through some affliction that you might have to press a little harder than what you used to but when you already had it all going on. Because it's easy to give God your best when everything is just going right right but then there are moments in our lives that God will require a little extra movement to be able to get him to do something that you weren't expecting for him to do you know we understand that he is our Jehovah Jireh right that means he's our providing God we understand that he's Jehovah Rapha God that means that he is our healer right we understand that he's Jehovah Makadesh that he's the God of our righteousness he is Jehovah El which means he's he's our God eternal he is our strong tower he is our banner he he is our daily bread right he is our living water he is our El Shaddai God but there are moments when those attributes in our present situation cause us to look at them and say is that really gonna happen to me is that situation really going to open in my favor? The truth of the matter is, is that life is built with problems in it. 
That's why when we talk to people and we talk to them about Jesus, we let them know. I'm just letting you know that if you choose to follow Jesus, your problems ain't going to go away. But you have God by your side that will help you with your problems, all right? Because it's it. It's, it's not like you, you show up to the Lord and you begin to follow him and all of a sudden, poof, you know, they're gone into thin air. No, there's going to be situations that we will face. So you have to understand that there will be moments in your life that you will go through some hardship. You will go through some pain. You will go through a moment that your heart will be broken, uh, you know, at least once or twice, unless you're lucky and, and you married the first person you dated, right? Right? Um, but you know, you, you go through those situations that you fall in love and you fall out of love and, and they cheat. Well, you know, you, it don't happen in the valley, only in New York, the city that never sleeps. You know, I, we can't go through life without being lied on, uh, without being persecuted without being despised without being betrayed without being deceived because that is life all right so all you have to do is you have to then look in the bible and utilize the text to be able to explain to you situations in the bible that let us know that we too can go through situations because the bible teaches us of people that were not exempt of the process i think the dilemma that we face is that sometimes we want the blessings of God but we don't want the processes of God to help us through the circumstance so that we can show the enemy I know what you thought you were going to do against me but because God is by my side he stood right here on my left and on my right and he said I got you look at your neighbor tell your neighbor he got me he got me he ain't gonna let me go he ain't gonna let me go see David was a great man of God a great king of Israel, and he was a worshiper. But if we read the text and we read his stories and we read the dialogue, we come to understand that David was not exempt from pain. We look at the life of Job and we come to understand that Job, even though he was righteous, even though he was upright, and in the text it teaches us that David had a certain protection around him. He had a hedge of protection, a hedge of blessing, a hedge of increase, a hedge of favor, and a hedge of mercy that at one point in time in his life the hedge was removed but it wasn't removed from within okay all right because it doesn't matter what you go through on the outside there's always something on the inside that the enemy will never be able to touch because there is something inside of me that says I know that I'm pressed on every side and I feel persecuted from the right from the left from the top and from the bottom but there's something inside of me that nobody can touch because I could be laying on my bed frustrated and overwhelmed but something inside me says my soul blesses the Lord my soul calls out to Jehovah I say you are God and there's nobody like you why because within you there is power my God the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, one of my favorite verses, that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think, but according to the power that's already working within you. So what he's telling me is that if I got something inside of me that's worth him giving me something exceedingly, then he's going to multiply it a hundredfold. So I got to look at myself and say, he's not looking at what's outside of me. He's working at what is in me so that when I go through the circumstance, the exceedingly abundant blessing that the enemies try to take from me he can't delete from me because he can't he didn't put it inside of me so look at your neighbor and say i dare you to give him just one small praise that, whoa that was good that's what i wanted look at your neighbor and say i want you to give him one small praise Hit the, okay all right all right come on stay on task get inside okay I, I think the dilemma is that if I start sweating it's gonna be a problem okay so um so I'm gonna calm down because I'm gonna get excited all right so we can go on and on in the Bible on how the situations of life hurt see sometimes we'll find ourselves in a pit and sometimes you'll find yourself in the fire sometimes you'll be on the mountaintop calling for fire from heaven and the next day you're hiding you're hiding from a, from a woman uh, that sent a letter. She didn't show up. She sent a letter. 
okay? I, ju- I, ju- I just won. I-, I won a victory. I-, I literally sat there and watched you guys slice yourselves. You guys were so mad that your God wasn't responding. And after your God didn't respond, in front of you, I actually rebuilt an altar. And not just that I rebuilt an altar, I wed it. Okay? I-, I-, I went and got something that was lacking. Okay? All right, and and I then I then poured over uh, the sacrifice, and then bef- and then and then what I did was I called for fire, and the fire came down, and, and and then and then after the fire came down, and the people looked and they were astonished and perplexed. They all came to the feet of Jesus, and then I followed all y'all fools, and I killed y'all one by one, cause that's what I was supposed to do. But then after such a great victory, because I'm at the mountaintop, I receive a letter. I received a letter. Mind you, I just killed a whole bunch of people, and now I got fearful that now I'm going to die because I received a letter that told me that I, my head was going to be on a platter by, by, by the night. Now, let me tell you something. There's going to be moments in your life that you're going to have some great victories, but don't think the enemy going to sit back and just watch you celebrate something God just did for you. He's going to rise up against you, and he's going to try to make you think that what you just won is no good. But you got to look at the enemy in the face, and you got to tell him, if he help me in this he gonna help me with that because the enemy will do whatever he can to try to paralyze your worship look at your neighbor say don't let him paralyze it don't let him paralyze it don't let him paralyze it if I can call for fire I can call God to kill this woman too it's in the the, just the text okay we ain't talking about nobody in your life be careful yes Uh, the bible says in the first book of peter chapter 5 verse 8 be sober and be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks Uh uh-huh walks about like a roaring what do you say roaring right like a roaring what seeking whom he may devour the bible doesn't say that he walks around eating he walks around roaring he's just walking that's all he's doing is, woo, woo. That might not be a good roar, and that wouldn't scare you. But, you know, you understand what I'm saying. You got it, right? Okay, point taken. All right, so he's roaring, roar, roar, whatever. Now, that's a dog, whatever. You know, so just get it. That's why I'm never in an animated film, because I don't got that type of anointing. That's not my lane. So he's walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom to devour, seeking whom to devour, seeking whom to devour. It doesn't mean he's going to eat you. It means he's going to try to devour your mind and devour your spirit and devour your enthusiasm and devour your energy and devour your passion because the roar can scare you Uh okay so the roar can be like you hear and you're like whoa hey what that you ain't gonna talk in tongues you running back you like that didn't happen let me tell you something i am scared of big dogs just want you to know that i'm scared of big dogs little dogs if i can kick you I'm, i'm all right But if you stand up on your two feet and you're as tall as me, there's a problem. And this is the tallest I've ever been. So there's a lot of dogs out there that are bigger than me. Okay. So when I see a big dog in the street, I'm crossing the street. Ah, Devil's a liar. But let me tell you something. He ain't jumping on me. Because I... Y'all, y'all don't understand because y'all don't understand my life right because I was bit when I was a child on my knee and it hurt a lot so I remember God's healed me but sometimes when I see it the devil tries to roar right and I run across the street because I need to be wise but you know what happened that's what happens in the lives of people in Christ you know there are circumstances that the enemy will roar in And he will roar so hard that it'll make you rethink if you're actually in position for your breakthrough so God is already telling you I've already given you the victory all you got to do is walk it out but the enemy because in John 10 10 says he's like a thief that comes to steal and he comes to kill and to destroy so he's on his way to try to take from you the very thing that he knows that he can't take from you but he will take it from you if you give him the permission to steal it from you so I'm here to tell you this is the time that the Lord is preparing for some of you that if you were to look within yourself look at your circumstances and say I got this I was made for this i am powerful i have authority i have god by my side and i will give him my best not for me but for what's coming after me oh my god i'm here to tell you this is a time that god is preparing for us to really give him our best 
uh, our best praise, you know, our best shout, our best ruach, you know, our best exclamation, our best calling out to God and say, Lord, I know that I know that I don't feel like giving you my best today because in reality, I'm exhausted. In reality, this situation knocked the wind up out of me, but I know that I know that I know that if I do what I'm supposed to do, something around me is going to begin to change. Something is shifting in my favor. Something is being moved on my right and on my left. Why? Because my praise makes room for my breakthrough. All right. The Bible says that he inhabits. What was that? Right. He inhabits in the praises of his people. So if he inhabits in your praise and the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. So if I give him the access and the latitude to do what he wants by me giving him what I'm supposed to give him and it ushers him in to walk into the circumstance. I can declare, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, the joy of my salvation. I, 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 know, I know I'm in a bed right now, but yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, the joy. I know that some bills might not get paid, but yet I will rejoice. In the Lord, not, not in you, and not in my neighbor, not in my wife. I will rejoice in, in the Lord. Why? Because I remember when I was broke years ago, and he showed up when I wasn't expecting him to show up. I was sick, thinking I was going to lose my mind, but then he showed up and poof, just fixed it all for me. I thought those doors that closed were going to be the end of my ministry, but then God does whoop. He opens up other doors. Why? Because I've understood that it doesn't matter what it looks like, what skin is what is lacking what is a broken what is upside down if I keep on looking at who he is yet yet I will rejoice in the Lord you know you know I'm, I'm telling myself what he probably was saying is I have decided I'm going to praise my God even when it don't make no sense I, I'm, I, I may be going through a season of sickness I may be grieving over of the loss of something I might be walking through the fire I might be going through family turmoil I might be crying myself to sleep I might be at the brink of losing my job but I will rejoice in the Lord I'm telling you today that I, I'm not going to run on my feelings and I'm not going to run on my emotions I'm not going to let that take over and in fact, I'm not going into depression. I'm not going to be stressed out. I'm not going to have panic attacks. I'm not going to try to drown myself in my sorrows. I'm not going to try to overdose on prescription drugs. I'm not going to get angry at God and accuse him that things are going wrong in my favor because of him. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip the table and I'm going to begin to tell my circumstance, watch what I do next. Watch how I open up my mouth and give him my best. Oh you, oh, you think I'm crazy? I'm going to be even more crazier when I open up my mouth and give him my best. Oh my God, my God, my God. You see, David had to encourage himself in the Lord. He, he had to encourage himself in the Lord because he saw himself in a predicament, in a precarious situation where he had to call out to God. See, the situation that we face in our lives is in the text. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the waters, that, that, that doesn't mean you're going to avoid it. When you pass through the waters, when you pass say, through the waters, and then the, Bible, the text says it's a comma there's not a period there's a comma that means there's a there's an add-on to that that means there's a continuation I will be with you when you pass through the waters when you pass through the waters watch this watch this and he says and he says this and through the rivers they shall not overflow you nah, okay all right there's gonna be moments in your life that you're in the river and you find yourself thinking, ooh, that water just hit me in my face. Ooh, I swallowed a little bit of water. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to make it. But the Bible's telling us you're going to go through the river, but it's not going to overthrow you. It's not going to kill you, and it's not going to destroy you. Uh, you're going to feel some stuff. You might think you're going to drown. You might think you're not going to make it. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to make it through when you go through the fire. Look at this. The Bible says, when you go through the fire, you shall not be burned. Yeah, 
Yeah. Nor shall the flame scorch you. So, yeah. so what it's telling me, watch this, watch this. So what it's telling me in the text, it will not scorch you. You know what it's saying? Well, uh, you, do you know what scorch means? I, I'll explain. Is it okay? I can come now. Yeah, I'm going to be mad at me. Okay. All right. So it, it scorch you. So that means that the things that might hang from the clothing uh, won't be scorched. That means because sometimes there's thread and, and there's stuff that, that at least it catches that. But what it's telling us is those things, not even that, will be touched. Yeah. Uh, not, not, not even some of the stuff that you're okay with losing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not even some of the stuff that, that you're going to be all right. Oh, that's a thread. That's nothing. Not even that. <laughs> Not even the stuff that you might think is insignificant am I going to allow to be scorched off of you. I walk with you. I've anointed you. I've called you. I've separated you. My mercy's on you. My favor's on you. My blessing's on you. My protection is on you. And if I called you for such a time as this, there ain't no fire. There ain't no water that can stop you from walking into your blessing. So what happens in our lives is that we become, we, we become conflicted. And this is what happens. And I'm, and I'm not about to close, but I'm almost close. This is what happens. We become pretty. We become pretty. And, and I'll explain it. Uh, we become pretty praisers. Pretty praisers. Pretty praisers. You know. There are people, and I'm not talking about nobody here because, you know, I don't really know any of y'all, but Pastor Charlie. But there are people that when they get up and they're giving God their best, like they anointed, like they filled with the Holy Ghost, like God is on them. Once they're done, they got to make, they got to make sure that they got to get right. You know, they're like, I can't do this much because I might get a little bit out of hand, you know. And maybe my hair might get a little sweaty and, and, and my makeup might run, you know. And, and, and you know, and, and, I don't, and I don't need to look crazy because people might be taking pictures and I need, to, I need to get a selfie right after the anointing fell on me, right. And, and you know, I, I need to be able to, to, to show the world that, that look at me, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the glory, but I'm still looking hot, you know, and sexy. You know, they, 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 there's a lot of pretty praisers in the church, you know, uh, people that know how to give God their best best praise in a very adequate fashion you know I know how to give it to you see senor yes lord touch me god you're on me thank you I worship you lord I thank you because you know everybody's able to do those things because it's easy you want to know why it's easy because it, it becomes a routine you know that praise becomes a routine, you know. It, it, it's something we do in church. It, it's something that we know how to do. It's something that we know when the best moment is coming and we got to jump, you know. We, we, we don't start jumping before the moment, you know, because everybody's going to jump in that moment. We, we know how to do it with the people. But then there's that one person out of the whole group that's a little crazy, you know. And they, they, they don't wait, you know, for those moments to show up. They, they don't care how ugly they look. In fact... They don't care that you talk about them. They don't care that you on the side trying to record them because you think it's kind of funny. You know, look at that. Look at the way they praise it. Yeah, but what you don't understand is that they just got a breakthrough and you're still crying to God to do something he should have done for you a year ago. Okay. So what happens is, this is what happens. When you give God something crazy, you know what happens? Heaven is at attention. But watch this. Hell is paralyzed. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Because the adversity is telling you, you shouldn't be this crazy. Okay. In fact, you should be relaxed and you should be taking, you, you should be, ta you should take steps back and you shouldn't be as excited as you are. But one thing you must understand, there is something crazy about an aggressive praise that it ain't pretty. You got to be able to tell yourself, I need to get uncomfortable. I need to get so uncomfortable that it gets the attention of heaven and heaven begins to work in my favor. And God begins to say, that's what I'm talking about. That is real freedom. That is liberty right there I want to do something for them so I'm here to tell you to just let it go 
the song. It's all free your mind, right? It's not a Christian song, so I'm not going to sing the rest of the lyrics, you know? But y'all got the, the point. You know, some of y'all just need to... Just, just get crazy. Just, nah, nah. yeah. Okay. So, there, there is, there is, there's a guy in the Bible, and his name is Job, not Job, right? <laughs> Even though some of us need that, but, th but that's not that. It's Job. It's Job. It's actually Job. And um, he, in a span of ten verses, in the text, he lost almost everything. And you know what? Let's be honest. I think he lost his wife too, but she was still alive. Um, with the way she was talking. Okay. You know, she was reckless. <laughs> but God kept her alive. I don't know what he was doing, but, you know. <laughs> he, you knew what you were doing, God. I'm just playing. You know, it's just me. You know, that's our relationship, you know. Um, in 10 verses, from, from a man that was blessed to a moment that his friends thought he was cursed. So one day, you're at your best, and the next day, you're at your worst. And then we find ourselves in the text where Job ends up saying, you know, you know, naked, without possessions, in the Amplified it says, came I, and naked, without possessions, shall I go. The Lord gaveth. The Lord taketh away. Let his name be glorified. He took it on. My livestock, my children, my servants, everything. And even, even in reality, my wife, even her thoughts were stolen from me. My support system is all gone. But you know what? In reality, I was naked when I came in. I didn't have any of that. It was just me. And naked I will go, and I will give you my best. The Bible says that he, 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 he took off his rags, his clothes, and he, he was on his face, and he was calling out to God, and he was saying, Lord, you know what? You still deserve your, my best praise. I don't care what it looks like. You still deserve everything. And the Bible says that he never cursed God. Never cursed him called out to God and said you know what Lord I don't understand what I'm going through but I don't need to understand it but I'm here and I need you I need you to help me I need you to do something for me I need you to run with me because I don't know what I'm going to do my mind I understand what you've called me to do but my circumstance is telling me it's over and, we, and then we find in the book of Acts chapter 16 two men and their names are Paul and Silas. I think you guys know the story. These men were, were put in jail because of what they were doing. And um, they were in the prison. And when they were in the prison, in the deepest part of the prison, um, there was a sound. A sound. The sound of praise and prayer. And what, what are you doing? In the, in the depth of the of the prison cell in the darkest space where there should be no growth. There's still something inside of me that I need to release. You know, and um, it, is, the key, is the keyboard guy here? Yeah? Could, yeah, you, just, that, yeah you'd be like, what am I going to do? I'll say, bye, just flow in the anointing, bye. Just let them use you. Let them use you. Let the rain fall on you. <laughs> Actually, it's just, okay. I guess you got fans, okay. Um, <laughs> calm down, people. Calm down. Uh, the last song that you guys were playing, what a beautiful name it is. Yeah, yeah. Whatever key that was on. <clears throat> I'll catch it. <clears throat> so Paul and Silas were in a prison where they should have been crying. You want to know why? Because they were beaten. They were hurt. They had wounds. They had sorrow. They were abused. They were thrown in the pit for nothing. You know what that is? 
that I'm thrown in prison for walking in my destiny? Oh my goodness. You know, that's the dilemma that many of us think that walking in our promise, everything is beautiful. But there's going to be moments in the, in the walk of your promise that you might be in prison. In prison in your thoughts. In prison in your feelings and your emotions. Feeling broken and ostracized and feeling isolated from the world. Looking around saying, is there anybody? Or is it just me? My God. And then I tell myself, Lord, you, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful and you're in a room by yourself and you're saying, I don't even understand why I still got a praise on my lips. But one thing is for certain, I knew what it did for me two years ago when I felt like going crazy. Because his name is beautiful. Not because I'm saying it, but, but because it showed up in circumstances where I thought it shouldn't have been there. It showed up in circumstances and situations where I, I should have lost my mind. But he showed up because I gave him my best. I didn't know where it came from, but it came from within myself. It's like Jeremiah. And he said, I tried to quit, Pastor. I tried. I tried to quit, but there was something inside me, in my bones that felt like fire, and I couldn't. I just couldn't. I just... I, I just had to turn back and say, all right, all right, all right. I'll do whatever it is that you're asking me to do. But I'm letting you know, I felt like quitting. I felt broken. I, I felt like I couldn't do it. I felt like I wasn't going to be able to make it. And all of a sudden, I turn. I say, God, you're beautiful. I got you. I'm walking with you. I'll do it. I'll do my best. I'll do whatever it is that you asked me to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Why? Because inside of you, you know it's not about the accolades of people, but about what he put inside of you, which is your best. Praise Where's the young lady that sang that song? Is that you? Just sing what a beautiful name it is and a soft, and a softness, and a stillness. So we find ourselves in a circumstance where we tell ourselves, I need to give them my best. And how does it sound? Go ahead. What a beautiful name that is. Uh-huh. What a beautiful name that is. And suddenly. Uh-huh. Keep on going. Name Jesus Christ Because that's how probably it sounded in the prison. A From a distance. They're like, whoa, whoa, what's that stuff? Like is that is that is that, is that for real? The name of Jesus. What a beautiful what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name. The Bible says that suddenly there was like a sound of an earthquake and the place began to shake what a beautiful name it is nothing 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 compares to this what a beautiful name it is you have no rival you have no rival you have no rival you have no dare you to raise your hand now and forever God you raise. hallelujah Jesus yours is the king yours is the glory yours is the glory yeah. yours is my name above all name. name you have no rival you, you have no rival no equal you have Is that you are one praise away you are one praise away from getting out of your prison cell and seeing what God is about to do and you might not be freed from that but there are gonna be people that will be blessed by your praise because when they were delivered something happened around them and people were saved I'm here to tell you this is the moment that God's been waiting for the Sunday that you've been 
waited for for you to give him your best praise and watch what he does give it to me you have no rival you have no rival perfect perfect let's go you have no rival give it to me church come on you have no rival yeah 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 you have no equal yeah yeah
and I, I'm done. But Jonah was disobedient. And Jonah landed in the, in the belly of a fish. He was there for three days and three nights. But in the belly, he ended up giving God a praise. And in the belly, when he gave God the praise, the fish got sick. The fish got sick. And not just that he gets sick, he threw up. I'm here to tell you that your praise is about to get your circumstance sick. Oh my God. And it's not gonna be able to hold you any longer. In fact, it's about to throw you up and it's gonna throw you up to your purpose. It's gonna throw you up to your assignment. It's gonna throw you up to your promise. And if you believe it right now, give them the best shout of praise I know your circumstance has a name. I know that person that's opposing you has a name. I know that that sickness has a name. But we have a name that is above all names. The greatest authority, the greatest power. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we magnify him, we put all of our circumstances in proper perspective. We begin to see our problem for what they really are. They're not that big when you compare them to his greatness, to his goodness, to his power. They're big when we're going through them. But when you magnify him through the process, through the trial, in the storm, when you worship his name, then you begin to magnify him and you put those problems in proper perspective and you activate your faith and you say, I have a big God for this problem. And because he's big, this is no problem for him. And because he's good, he's going to pull me through. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. And whether you're here or you're watching online, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, the Bible says you got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him up from the dead. And if you have believed in your heart, we want to help you confess. This is the greatest act of worship. This is something, speaking of you have to do it, you have to do this because this is, this is your eternal salvation on the line. You can come to Jesus right now. And when we, when we come to Jesus, listen, we, we're, we're not made eternal when we die. We're made eternal when we give our lives to Jesus. You can secure your eternal salvation right now in this moment. With every eye closed, every head bowed. If you're going to, Invite Jesus into your heart. Repeat this prayer with us. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I surrender my life. I surrender my heart. I repent of all of my sins. And I pray you forgive me. I confess you, my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, take over my life. Guide me to all truth and righteousness. I want to serve my Savior the rest of my days. For salvation, Jesus, I give you praise. And in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Can somebody give God some glory for all of our friends who have given their lives to Jesus. And we welcome you to the family of God. If you made that prayer or you visited us for the first time on the way out at reception, we have a gift for you. Before we leave, one last thing. Listen, we want to thank everybody that responded to the call last week and that you began to, to activate your faith and believe God for more and you were pressed to sacrifice. And uh, we thank God because even as we were traveling to Dallas this week and even on the way back, we were getting calls from people that God was just dealing with their hearts and you guys have responded in an overwhelming manner. And, uh, and we believe that God's going to be glorified through this new building, this new house, and what's going to happen in there. And so if you weren't here last week, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and watch that service and, and join the pledge drive. We started a pledge drive from here to June 19th. And uh, we, we've set that as a deadline. We're believing that by then God will supply whatever you purpose in your heart to give towards our new building. It's one last push. Listen, we, we're ready to go in there uh, financially, but what we want to do is get in there with as little debt as possible. And so it's not a make or break situation, but it might be for you because your blessing might be held back because you haven't sown into it. And so we're giving you this opportunity uh, to, to praise the Lord, to bless Him, and to be blessed in return. Okay? Come on, can somebody shout amen to that? All right, we're going to be dismissed. Remember on the way out, we got the tickets. To the Eunice Rodriguez Hope Gonzalez concert. We also have uh, the information table with Dr. Henry Alvarez for that trip to Israel and that El Shaddai Christian University. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for this time together. Father, we, we, we pray right now that just as we have felt your presence here, just as we've been able to worship here, that we will be able to worship throughout the rest of our week, no matter what comes our way. We promise, we pact right now, we covenant with you, God, that we will worship our way through the storm, in the fire, through the rivers. We're, going to, we're not going to let the enemy steal the praise from our lips because the joy of our salvation is present within us, even when outside of us we're being pressed at every angle. And Father, we, we just declare and determine that we will glorify your name and that we will see our breakthrough, Father, and that our breakthrough will glorify your name as well. I call all of your children blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We love you, church. God bless you.